Hi everybody, it's Geezer again with another update of Super Sprint. Um, so it's been a while since I've done the last update, it's probably a couple of weeks now, and I've been on and off working on it, uh, and the stuff I've been working on has primarily been to do with the in-game stuff this time. So uh, previously I was doing more of the, you know, the... The, the fancy sort of like scenes that you see like the prepare to race scene that type of stuff so I got them out of the way uh, which has allowed me to concentrate on the the actual core physics side of things which is what I really found and I knew would be the technical challenge because when it comes to mathematics I'm not really the best uh, and I knew there would be a bit of mathematics in it um, but with some great help from the guys over at the English Amiga board in particular Ross uh, you know we've uh, well we've got I think we've got to where where I need to be uh, so I'm going to show you what what I've been up to um, as far as the as far as the in-game stuff is concerned and uh, now in development update one I did actually I did actually have the car moving around but I was never quite happy with it and I knew the mathematics for it weren't right but you'll see in this update that I've added quite a some quite nice effects so here we go this is actually development update five um i got a bit mixed up on the youtube video so this is five um and not six so let's take a look at where we are so just compile things up here and run it up uh, i will try and in fact what i'll do is spit out a little bit here so I've got the collisions turned off at the minute, but you'll see that the car is actually moving quite nicely around the track. So I'll just give it a quick bomb round, and you know you can you can get the. Uh, in fact, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna redo that again and just get it to go around the track course. So then you'll be able to see the score updating and things like that. So. I just reset the Amiga. Hopefully that'll. So let's give this a try. So there, the priorities are working because um, the the cars hitting the correct cars hitting the correct uh, track codes, which I'm going to show you in a second. Uh, and I still haven't managed to get. I must not hit the right parts of the track properly yet, uh, but I'm sure I will this time, and hopefully get the. You can see the score increase in there, and there's the lap increased. So I did have that previously working, but the thing to look out for really is the the fact that the car's like really handling quite nicely here, and I can adjust pretty much anything, anything I like about the car. If I want the traction to be a lot uh, sharper, I can. If I want the drag to be sharper i can um or more loose and i've got the parameters now in the code that i can just change all of that and it's it's really really quite nice the other thing that i've done as you see the other two cars are waiting here so i'm just going to get me competition pro and i've got the competition pro here now and i can get the other car going so i'll try my best to control both cars at the same time with with me Sega pad which I've got and there you go so there's there's two of the cars going at the same time there so I probably need to turn the blue car around again there you go there you go and as well on the keys we've got the um, we've got the yellow car working as you would expect on the key so that what I'm doing there is is using space bar Q and O and um, sorry Q and W and space bar to accelerate the car so there you go so all the cars are actually controllable now uh, you can also use own pay to control the cars uh, to control the yellow car and one one interesting thing i had um i was talking about, i guess it's one of the developers of um of amiga live and he actually configured the configured the game to work over amiga live and it it, it 
it works actually really well. I was really pleased with it. So you over over net play, you can actually make it work. And there was a, I think there's a few little things to iron out, but overall I was really happy with it. You know, you can have three players going at the same time. Um, and yeah, it's I think it'll work out really really well. It'll be a really good, really good, um, really good game in the end. I am considering actually a couple of things as well, is to actually have four players and you know being able to take over the green drone. Um, by all means, if you want to make a comment about that, what do you think? Whether it'll enhance the game or not, um, you know, let let me know. Or do you think that there should always be a a a computer car to actually to actually compete against? Um, so yeah, just let if you want to let me know in the comments, uh, I'd I'd appreciate that. Um, what else have I done? So at the minute, like I say, I've got the I've got the car. I've got the car collisions switched off. So I've re-implemented some of the collisions and I'm just going to show you where I am with that. So if we scroll down to the collision code, I'll just re-enable that and do a rerun. And I'll just maximize this out for you. So the blue car now is going to actually um, do some collision stuff. So if I try going at this barrier, hopefully it will. There you go. You kind of get this knockback on the barrier. Or if you hear it at a particular angle, it will kick back. So I haven't implemented all of these uh, just yet because it, it, takes a, it takes a fair bit of work to actually do it. Um, and... You know, I wanted to make sure that the collisions were all done right properly. Um, so as you say, I've purposely went and done that. So they're not completely implemented. You know, the car's a bit erratic at the minute, and that's to do with it switching over, switching over between the um, the upper upper level and the lower level, which I've inadvertently done. So I'm just, in fact, I'll show you an example of this of what this what this is actually doing. So. If we, um, if I just take a look at this, so when the car, and I believe I showed this in the in in episode in in uh, episode one, I guess we'll call it episode one. The car is actually moving around these different these different eight by eight block blocks and reading the front of the car reads which block it's under, and the blocks in orange, which range from 00, zero through to uh, 1F, which is 31, those are collision blocks. So the if the car hits a collision block, it will react in some sort of way. It'll either bounce off or, it'll, or it might crash if it's going at a certain speed, that type of thing. And what you've got in the in the blue is the is the switch to change from an upper level to a lower level. So you'll see here I've got 21s in there. It just means that it needs to switch to the upper level. So the upper level, when it goes up the ramp, will look like I guess if I switch up, it will look like that. So when the car goes up the ramp, it then switches to these collision bites here. And it goes around there and then it'll come back down. Once it gets to this 21 here, it then switches back down. So that's that's how that is working. And what we've also got is the in order to understand how the car, understand who's the winner of the actual race, we've got to put these these codes in here. So these are the, in the in the green, are the kind of the checkpoint codes as I'm calling them. So the cars have to pass these particular codes in sequence for a lap to complete. And if a car misses one of these misses one of these uh, these blocks then it hasn't completed the lap completely because there'd be nothing stopping really a car starting here and then just kind of going going around and then hitting the finish line if I didn't do that. Yeah, so that's that's the point of that. And the 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 orange the sorry the purple cords here I'm actually going to use for the for the drone car. So when you're playing against say three of the drones, what will need to happen is is that the drones will need to kind of be guided 
and that's what I'm going to use this for. So there'll probably be another like map like this, but it'll just be um, it'll just be full of these chords here. And it, what it essentially does is normally the drones will take a particular route around the tracks. Um, and if a player car crashes into them, then the, the drone car needs to go off, kind of veer off, or you know the drone car might explode, and then it needs to know how to get back onto the circuit. So that's what these guides will do. So you know I'm going to have these all around so that the, once the, when the drone car's hitting it, it might go, it'll go towards the centre of the track to get back on to get back on uh, where it needs to be. So that's so that's that. So if you hadn't seen this before, these are the these are the the overlays in in uh, in map editor and I've overlaid those two and then what we do is see there's the upper track that's what the upper track looks like in the Amiga memory so I'll just put the load track in as well and so there you can see if I just adjust the oh how do I adjust the uh, I'm forgetting how to do this now um, Not that one. So that's the upper one. No, I just need to do that one. Ah, that's it. So I just need to yeah, bring that. It change the uh, transparency on that. So that's the lower track. And then if we overlay the upper track, which is already there, we see the the upper part track there. And what we've also got is that the car, in order for the collisions to work. We've got this collision map, so that's the upper collision map which the car must go around. If it veers outside of this, then that's when it reads those these orange control codes, uh, which is it's nicely implemented that I think. So I'll just put the low low map on as well, if I can. There you go. So the car has to go around these this this track here. Um, and then if it veers off, if it touch, if it goes outside of this track, it will start to read these these chords here, which I highlighted earlier on. So it'll start reading these these chords to to for it to do something. Now I was looking, and I think it, through my calculations, the chances are I can probably get um the the uh both the super sprint tracks and the championship sprint tr tracks in at this into the one game which i think would be really nice um you know just to, to make it a nice and meager exclusive um you know neither super sprint nor champion championship sprint was actually released for the amiga so i'm i'm you know, I'm, I really am thinking about just doing that. It's probably not much work once I've got it done um, to just include the extra tracks. Um, but disk space and memory might... I, I, the memory won't be a problem. It's more the disk space that's the issue. So wait and see. Um, once I get the game implemented, which is nearly there now, uh, you know, the, I'll be able to move forward. But I think from my point of view, the hard part's actually being done, which was getting the car working really well. Uh, there's still some tweaks to be done, uh, but next up will be just getting the little little animations going. So when the car crashes into something, there's like a puff of smoke that comes out. Um, there's the uh, there's the little tornadoes that appear and the, the you know the oil slicks and stuff like that. So I'll be able to implement that sort of stuff uh, quite 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 quickly, I think. So that's it. Development update number five. I hope you like it. Um, just. Let me know what you think um, about including the other tracks and the and the other stuff. And that's me over and out. See you later.